Okay, I'm home now. Home now, finishing up these videos, sitting in my driveway. Um, I thought I'd blow through the top 10, top 5 horse movers. We had a lot of horses that looked pretty good yesterday. I know it's easy for me to say because there are horses, but you saw the same thing I did. We had 54 horses on the track. The last set, obviously, is a little bit behind everybody else. So that was 5. There's 49. Mr. Capers hurt. 48. Better call Mike's turned out. 47. Uh, outside of those 47, all those horses looked like they went locks yesterday. They did well yesterday. And Dalcrest Angel, Star Angel, one mile and 212. Well, I've been touting to everybody. Won't be ready till September. <laughs> she won a mile and 212 yesterday. I don't know where the hell that came from. Danny said she was well in hand. First time we put the hobbles back on her in quite a while. So for those of you out there who own a piece of Dalcrest Star Angel, there you go. She led plenty fast. Um, still not going to have her ready for uh, probably before July. I'm going to stick to my timeline right now. If, we, if we're ahead of schedule, great. Definitely won't be behind the schedule by the looks of that. So back to what I was saying, 47 of these 54 look like they're well on their way to qualifying. No, no issues, no horses that come up lame yesterday or today. No horses that have been showing any sort of regression at all. We've had some horses that, you sure, they wear roller burrs or Murphy blinds and they get in a little or they get out a little. But they all seem like they're moving forward. So, you know, to break 57, have three of them leave. We sold three. Uh, Let It Ride took, um, um, sent uh, just a tad and, and uh, Dio down to uh, Mr. Krogan. We had another horse leave. I can't remember who now. Anyway, we have 54 yearlings in the barn right now, two-year-olds in the barn right now. Of those 54, I can see a uh, clear line of sight between them and the qualifiers first week of June. We are going to have a couple of them, as I said, ready a little bit later that we want to um, take some time with. Uh, so let's say 37. I don't know. Let's say 37 the first week of June. 10, somewhere between the third week of June and first week of July. And then another one... Two, three, four, five, six, six or seven will be ready. Uh, I would think at some point between uh, July and October uh, of 2018. So it's pretty hard to say, but if, you know, all things equal, there's a clear path between uh, clear path from all 54 to the qualifiers at some point in 2018. At this point. Now, obviously, a lot is going to change over the next three weeks. We may have to put some horses away, depending on what happens. But as of what I saw yesterday, and what I'm looking at in front of me, pretty good run. Pretty good run so far up till now. So the biggest problem I had was uh, trying to figure out who was going to be on the top 10 and top 5. Um, I had 21 horses on the top 10. So I've been sitting here trying to whittle them down. I have... Uh, six on the ones to watch list had to whittle it down to five top five movers top 10 stayed five and ten six on the watch list and i'm going to have to mention another seven that just you know they were either mentioned last week in the ones to watch or the top movers they're just below just below that top notch those top 10 and this top 10 is moving this week i tried to take horses like arvika she made a break yesterday. Uh, now we are going to move her time frame back simply because I'm not rushing for a July 27th stake race in New Jersey to wait six weeks for the next one. That's not going to happen. We're looking at uh, end of August for her. So she ripped a shoe off yesterday. Um, there's no point doing a Facebook Live or sending a, a message out to everybody. She ripped a shoe off. When she made a break, either after, Mario thought before, in my experience as a driver, it's usually after. But he thought before she ripped a left front shoe off before she made a break. Maybe she did. I don't know. Um, I changed her shoes this week. No, not as good as I'd hope she'd be with those shoes on. Mario had some thoughts on what he thought she'd be a lot more comfortable in. So we're going to make a few little changes and keep going. Um, I wouldn't say by any means yesterday was regression. I think everybody's seen her made a break, make a break timer. A time or two before, but keep in mind... Uh, her time on a half mile track right now may be the only time she'll see a half mile track between now and the end of her three year old season. So, not too concerned. She certainly didn't make any breaks over at Mohawk the other day. She looked awesome. But, given what I'm looking at, uh, given, what I'm, given what I'm looking at, she's sitting 11th. 
which is fair. When you see who I have on this top 10 list, it's fair. Um, anyway, we're going to move to, we're going to start it off with top five movers of the week. And these are pretty self-explanatory. Again, you guys watch the same videos I did. Any one of these five could end up on the top 10 at some point in the very near future. Hard eight was fantastic yesterday. Mile and two, five or two, six. Sylvain said she was loaded. She ended up back. She ended up back in the two hole. Um, see how that just happened? Somebody called me and I hit ignore. That little phone app that I had from last week kept canceling my videos. Gone. Um, hard eight was now that I think of it, the same guy called me all three videos. Probably should call him back. Uh, hard eight was fantastic. Uh, last week looked really, really good. Or if last week, yesterday looked really, really good. Sylvain was floored by her. He said, It's hard to believe a Philly this big moves that quick on a half mile track. So, these are the things I want to hear of all the horses in the stable. Hard eight doesn't wear a head pole, doesn't wear anything. They put a pair of shin boots on her, but she doesn't even need them. She wears like a 58 and a half inch hobble and nothing else other than a bridle. So super excited. This is the filly that's out of the half sister to, to bolt the door. So um, was lazy all winter and now she sprung the leaf. He said, no, she's not lazy. He said, I was climbing over top of them in the last turn. And he said, I just went to duck her to the inside and the other guy kind of drifted in a bit. So I just stayed there. He said, she was really really good yesterday so she's easily and these are in no particular order. I, I didn't well, i guess they could be yeah looking at who i'm looking on this list she should maybe be in number three but we'll bring her in at number five hard eight twinsburg two four and three yesterday uh ricky mcphee sitting on her um there's two seconds right there, <laughs> right there. So, <laughs> twinsburg so uh, for those of you who missed the broadcast doug mcnair was kind enough to come out and fill in um uh, Jody Jameson was not there. Louis Philippois, they had obligations in London. I didn't realize it. I did now in hindsight, but uh, London had their own Mother's Day thing. They had eight races at London. Uh, Jody went to drive one of Jack Darling's at one. Louis Philippois went to drive a couple of Richard Moreau's. I didn't see it, but I'm assuming the Richard Moreau's, they probably won. Uh, so they weren't there. Uh, Mike Saftik only could stay for five. He had to go open up his camp uh, with his family. So that was nice of him to come at all. And Dougie went with five. So I went with two. I went with Oso Pine, who we'll talk about in just a moment. And um, I went with Casanova's Jewel. We had a break. Couldn't fit him on the list. I give him all the all the room in the world, and I think he'll be a great horse. But he didn't make any of the list. Nothing wrong with that. I love that horse. So, um, so anyway, we had the last three sets. Uh, Danny O'Brien went with three. Uh, and Ricky McPhee went with a couple. So anyway, uh, Twinsburg looked awesome. Two, four, and three last half and one, one over that farm is an extremely good mile. Way she did it and who she was in with, she looked good. Curious winner. Um, if you could see close enough, uh, I was a little bit worried. So Curious winner hasn't kicked in like two months. You know, remember back in the winter, he smashed those two jog carts, all the shit. Uh, and he hasn't really done anything wrong. So I had Dougie down to drive him. I get to the burn. Sunday morning, and uh, I forget who it was. They come up and they said, Do you sure you want Dougie to go with Curious Winner? I said, Oh, he's trying good. I think, No, no, he kicked yesterday. I said, What do you mean he kicked? Well, he didn't smash anything, but he, he kicked. Uh, okay, so Dougie's not going to go with the horse. So I went down to go with him, and uh, James said he'd go with him. And I'll tell you what, for those of you who know me, you know, I'll drive anything. Any horse, I always would, never had a problem. I grew up driving dangerous horses, never had a problem driving them, but I hate a horse that kicks. I get put in the hospital. I don't know if you can see that bulge in my arm. I get put in the hospital in Ottawa. A horse kicked the shit out of me going in behind the gate. I'm not scared. I just don't like you're in a confined space where they can do some damage, and, and uh, that horse kicked me three or four times in the chest that night, and you think, oh, you just fall off the back. It's not that easy. You're, you're hanging on the lines, you know, and the, and the, and the horse is kicking. She was a mean horse. Anyway, kicked a hole in my arm. The last one off the side of my head. Kicked my chest. I don't like kickers. I'll go with them. I went with Curious Winter plenty of times in a jog cart because he's not going to hurt me. But uh, in a bike, not a big fan. Not a big fan at all. Anyway, James, um, I was going to go with him. I said, I'll go with him. James said, I'll, I'll go with him. I'll go with him. He'll be all right. I said, he may not. Like this... He's fast horse, but he's got some dirt in him. He's got a little bit of dirt in him, old curious winner. So um, 
we had a chain from stirrup to stirrup on the bike and we had his, tied, tied, his tail tied underneath the chain. Uh, so he wasn't kicking yesterday. But I, I just don't trust the horse. And nevertheless, he is fast. He won his training set 2 6 last half and won one and a piece. Looked great. He comes in at number three. Um, kicker or not, he's fast. He's talented. He's sister. He's out of a sister to lawmaker. He's got the right pedigree. He can trot fast. But uh, not a big fan of the kicking. James showed some balls. Good for James. I was gonna I was gonna bite my lip and go, the last thing I want to do is have these guys come over to train these horses and have somebody hurt like I I, uh, I don't got a whole lot of shame but I would feel pretty bad uh, feel pretty bad if somebody had to get hurt so especially James but good for him he went out went with him said he was great don't make any changes biting the right line a little bit used to bite it quite a bit so clearly you see some progression from uh, curious winner at least in the physical department mentally still a bit of a schizophrenic animal but nevertheless um, did well yesterday so Give him props. Horse looked good, trained good, did his work well. James was happy with him. I'm happy with him. Comes in at number three. Now these next two could easily, easily end up in the top ten, anywhere near the top of the list. Both had me paying attention. I did not think they could do what they did yesterday. Both these horses I did not think were ready to do what they did yesterday, and both of them looked unbelievably good yesterday. Start with the number two. Christine K. This is a, you know my feelings now if you watched all our commentary videos on Rock and Roll Heaven. Nothing against the horse. Absolutely, unbelievably good horse. World champion, fast. I was at the Little Brown Jug the year he won with Daniel Dubé. Impressed the hell out of me. Just a good horse. As a sire, not a fan. Not a fan of Rock and Roll Heaven. Uh, and nothing against them. Maybe I just got the wrong ones. You know, maybe there's some nice ones. I think Renee Allard had a nice one last year that he got from Chris Ryder, if I believe. Uh, Spring Springsteen, maybe, or Springstead. I can't remember his name. Anyway, he was a nice horse. Uh, he was rock and roll heaven, so I'm sure there's lots of them out there. I just haven't had too many of them. I've had four. They all seem to have the same issues, except for Christine K. Um, Christine K. had got to the burn a month late, so she was really missing a month of work. So every time we trained her, she looked a little lackluster, compared to some of the other horses, but Jesus, you know, she's literally a month behind. Now she's starting to catch up, right? She's starting to get that speed. And I said to Sylvain, I said, you know, I trained this filly in the middle of the week and she looked good. I said, if she feels good, show her off a little bit. Um, you know, don't go too much with her, but show her off. She looked some good. He pulled up, he had trouble, if you watch the, watch the replay, I watched it twice now, uh, he had trouble pulling her up after the mile. He said, this is, this is a serious filly. He said, who's she by? I said, rock and roll heaven. I said, she's a three-quarter sister to a rock and roll dance. Really? I said, yeah. And he said, any shares left in her? I said, no. No, uh, there's not, sadly. But very, very nice filly. So hopefully it works out for Crawford Farms. I mean, uh, they do business with a lot of people, and they're good people. They have their own farm, their own trainers. So might never have a horse for them again, but I was really, really, I'm really, really enthusiastic about the one that we have for them right now. Man, she was impressive yesterday so for michelle and renee and all the owners from the barn that own pieces of this filly don't listen to me go watch the video she looks some good yesterday number one mover of the week and i just couldn't put him on the top 10 because we've never talked about him he had some health issues you know what I'm talking about he had some health issues real bad in the winter didn't really know what to think of him i haven't personally sat beside behind him in months uh see you in tuscany where the hell did that mile come from Horse one mile in two three or two four coming off in fifty nine. Phil Houdon pulled up and he goes, "I'm really sorry." He said, "I know you wanted to go slower." He said, "You couldn't have done it any easier. You couldn't have trained a horse any easier than this horse just trained." See you in Tuscany blew me away yesterday, uh, and that blew me away. Like you hear me talk me through it. There's no shares left. It's not like I'm pumping the tires of Christine K and see you in Tuscany because I'm trying to sell shares. You know I don't do that. There's no shares for sale in them. None of the one, one of the top five movers has shares available so um that was an incredible mile yesterday i i, I was floored see you in tuscany is an impressive looking animal and, and phil said he couldn't have done it any easier and i believe him i watched the video like five times what looking for a step looking for something he did wrong anything nothing could have found his way on the top 10 but he's never been talked about 
How can I put him on the top 10 when we've never spoke a word about CU in Tuscany other than he looks good, doing his work good, he's coming, he seems all right. He seemed good yesterday. Blew me away. See you in Tuscany. Number one mover of the week. Easily. Easily. There's only a couple of horses looked. There's like five that looked tremendous yesterday. Everybody looked good as as a, as the total package. As, you know, the whole work of, you know, the whole body of work of the stable.ca yesterday. I thought everybody looked good. You know, a couple of them made some mistakes. First time in the bike. Of course they're going to. A lot of them didn't. Only about five looked tremendous. Like extraordinary 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 hmm. well, well. Uh, extraordinary five of them looked really really good see you in Tuscany and Christine K were two of them uh, and it might be five I didn't say five because I have five written down somewhere there was some that really stuck out and those were two for sure okay so moving on uh, we're going to take a look at uh, the horses to watch this is tough to do, man. I'm telling you. I thought I was being stingy and tight. 33 horses on a list where I can fill 20 spots. Uh, so some did get left off. It was really hard to do. Really hard to do. They're all going to get mentioned, though. All of them. So um, ones to watch, I have six. These are no-brainers, too. Just go watch the videos again. Uh, I'm not going to number them because these all horses all did well yesterday. Maxwell Plum old Max. If you don't like Maxwell Plum, just stop watching my videos. Because Maxwell Plum is is a, a, just a, a beautiful horse. Loves to work and is nice to deal with. Just just a nice horse. I said that to Phil too. I said, you know, don't listen. I don't know if you asked anybody in the barn about Maxwell Plum. Don't listen to anybody. No one. Just go out there and drive him like he's a racehorse. Get away wherever you want. Come first over. Tap him on the tail. He'll trot as hard as he can the entire time you ask him. He came in, he goes, you're, you're right. He said, what a nice horse. He said, I just moved him first over. I didn't want to come hard. I didn't want to use him hard. Around the last turn, he got looking or goofing around. I hit him a swat, and he trotted right through the wire. Maxwell Plum's a nice horse. I'm going to enjoy driving this horse, I can tell you that. I love horses that love to do their work and know what their work is. This guy's a nice horse to drive, and definitely always one to watch. Probably was on the top 10 on last week. I don't know. Nice horse. Majesty Boy, just one of those woodwork horses, you know, just in, in, in the background, you know, everybody, if you watch the videos enough, you're like, who's that one, who's that one, it's always Majesty Boy, everybody asks, who's that one, who's that one, he's just always kind of lurking off the top 10 landscape, and looked great yesterday, Phil went with him too, said he was really impressive, he said, I like this one too, he said, and, and I, you know, he's asking who he's by, he said, Tramp and Caviar, Really, really impressed with, um, should never chew your nails up. That's what you get. Hang now. Idiot. <laughs> um, um, Majesty Boy uh, looked tremendous yesterday. Finished up his mile well, looked great. Really, really like this colt too. Um, obviously easy to mention, holding steady. This horse should not. This horse is too big to do what he, yes did, what did he, what he did yesterday at Campbellville, um, I, I just, I shake my head, I'm watching them go, and then I know there's some people that own shares around me, and I don't want to be overly optimistic, or certainly not pessimistic, but I'm watching the mile, and I look over, and the guy looks at me, I forget who it was, he owns a piece of me, he says, uh, what a difference, he said, I can't believe that horse just did that, and I said, yeah, it's, I, I, I don't know what to tell you, I, I do not know what to tell you. All I know is that Holden Steady looked tremendous yesterday. Tremendous. Uh, well on schedule. I told you. First week of June, these horses, these three Illinois breds will be ready to go in Illinois. And they looked good yesterday. Now people said, oh, Ivanka looked flat. Yeah, we had the hobbles a little tight on Ivanka yesterday. It's not her fault. She got tired. She went a mile on two, seven, and three at a farm track. She was tired because they had the hobbles on too tight. I'm going to take her to Mohawk. It's the same size track as Hawthorne. I'm going to take the hobbles off her this week and see what she does. Anyway, holding steady, looked awesome. Screaming Hawk, really should be on the top 10 list the way he looked yesterday. Man, oh man, this is a good looking horse. Angus Hall, and I, I see the voices subsiding in his head. I said to Phil yesterday, again, yeah, Phil went with him. He had a good day. Phil went with him, and I said, hey, he's an Angus, eh? So just keep that in mind. You start him up, stir him up, put him in behind somebody. Just keep in mind, he's, 
a little cuckoo sometimes. <laughs> anyway, he uh, he was great. Great yesterday. Phil liked him a lot. Ontario bred, Angus Hall. Really happy with what we got for Ontario this year. And Screaming Hawk definitely will be represented in that. Uh, very, very happy with what I saw in him. He looked great. Looked fantastic. Did his work right. Did nothing wrong. That's the most important thing. Dancing on my own. I think I said to keep an eye on this filly last week, watch her, and she's still on the ones to watch list. Mario really liked her. Put a few little shuffles in, which again, she's a big, big filly on a little track. Shouldn't be able to go a mile and two six, and that's what she went yesterday. Um, gonna make a few little shoeing changes just to see if it helps. If it doesn't, we can snap the shoes back on her. But uh, I'm gonna make a few little tweaks this week before I go to Mohawk with her. Um, really happy with what I saw Sunday. Mario was happy with her. Obviously, everybody that was there was interested in her pedigree um, and was interested in her. And pretty hard not to be. You don't like dancing on my own. I, like I said, a couple of times, you just don't like horses. I mean, she doesn't wear a boot. She doesn't wear a pole. She doesn't wear earplugs or anything. I just throw a bridle on her and a long hobble and away you go. And she's still a little frail. Put on some weight. So Ira, Ira Fisher that takes care of us doing a great job. She has put on maybe 20, 30 pounds. And you can see it. She looks a little shinier. As her hair starts to fall out even more and she starts to really look sleek, I think you're going to really see this filly come forward. So dancing on my own impressive mile yesterday. And easily, I'm going to say the biggest jumper of the week, easily the horse that looked um, of the horses. To, oh, no, wasn't the biggest jumper. I can't miss that guy. But impressive. Let's just say she was ultra impressive was Delcrest Star Angel. I've been telling everybody, oh, she'll be ready in September. She'll be ready in September. she got this stake in September. No rush with her. And everybody's like, oh, okay, you know. Everybody's a little timid. They're like, oh, what happened to her? She made a break last week. She's not keeping up. She's not doing this. And I kept telling everyone, it's a process. Take your time. And then Danny slaps the hobbles on her because it goes mile 212. <laughs> I don't want to tell you. I don't know where that mile came from either, but uh, she did it easy, and she was happy to do it. Sometimes these horses, you know, the hobbles help them in different ways. Some of them help them do their work. Some of them help them not make mistakes. Um, there's multiple ways that they can that the horses take them. You know, sometimes you're really masking some underlying issues when you're putting the hobbles on. We try not to do that as much as we can, unless we know what the issues are and we're working on them. You're not going to just see a horse doing things wrong, throw the hobbles on them and say, nah, whatever. That's not us. So, um, Danny A said, you know, what about putting the hobbles back on that filly? Because if you remember way, way back before we got the operation on her, when she was just even going three minutes, we had the hobbles on her. And that was really, obviously, to mask the issue. She had an OCD in her hock and her ankle. So, uh, we have more of them on her since she came back. And she made a couple of breaks in her last videos. Wasn't concerning me. Might have concerned our clients a little bit that own her. Certainly didn't concern me. And Danny said, you know, why don't we put the hobbles on her for open house day? So yesterday was the first day she had the hobbles back on in months. Just turned her the right way of the track and zoom. 212, no problem whatsoever. Bow in her neck. Um, Danny said, I, I felt a little bad because I knew how much I was going. She'd been in 23 or something. But that was in a jog cart. And this was two trips. And first time going two trips. And you know, a little bit of fish out of water. But at the same time, looked great. And Danny said, uh, you know, they were bathing her off. She couldn't blow a match out. She looked great. So uh, we're still going to keep her backed off a little bit. I'm not going to uh, accelerate her qualifying date to begin with just because she went in 212. It might a little bit, obviously. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say yesterday was, was a lot more than I thought she was ready to do. But at the same time, did it well. Did it really well. So... Um, really, really happy with what I've seen from Delcrest Star Angel, especially yesterday. Now, I had to, I could easily put this horse in the number one spot overall, because he was yesterday. You look at all the videos, we're going to talk about some horses that looked really good. I'm going to tell you about one that looked the best. The best horse yesterday, the very best horse, was Oh So Pine. Oh, so pine. I told everybody he trained good. Keep your eye on him. Watch him. He should be back in the top 10 less soon. He just bounced out yesterday and went a mile and two, four, and three, last half in a minute over that farm with an absolute bow in his neck. You watch him finishing up. I heard Danny make a break in behind me with Final Answer, who was also going to roll right along. I don't know what he did. He just rolled off in the middle of the straightaway. Maybe the hobbles were a bit long in him. We're not talking about him today. We're talking about Oh, so pine. Um,. I heard him make the break behind me, and I cinched him up, and I was going to slow him up. And I hear another horse coming. I don't know who it is. Stonebridge Simba. We'll talk about him in a little bit. 
Stonebridge Shimba roared up alongside me, and I'm like, we're going lots. I mean, Oso Pine's probably going to get tired. We come out of the turn, I tap him on the tail. Gone again. And not only was he gone, but if you watch the entirety of the video till the end, I had a chore pulling him up. That's how strong this horse is. Two, four, and three last half in a minute over over Campbellville. And people might say, oh, well, the track's a little short. I don't give a shit of a chore. So what do you go? Two, six? Two, five? Two, seven? Doesn't really matter. And that's why I keep telling you guys about the time. Doesn't matter what I tell you. Just look at what you see on the video. Both Stonebridge Simba and Oso Pine looked tremendous yesterday. But Oso Pine did all the work. Parked around the first turn, cleared to the front. You know, bullied everybody. And then, not only crazy bully, but when I cinched him up in the last turn, no problem, just slow right up. Should have been exhausted. Come out of the last turn, tap him on the tail, gone again. Oso Pine was by far in my mind, and there were some good looking horses yesterday. Oso Pine was number one yesterday for me. So I'm gonna put him in the number one horses to watch. And if he isn't in your number one horses to watch already, you're blind or you haven't seen the videos yet. Oso Pine is the number one horse from yesterday, and there was some good horses. And we're going to talk about 10 of them right here. 10 of them. We're going to talk about seven other ones that could have made the list. But I wanted to talk about Oso Pine. He dropped off the list a few times. Sure, I could have brought him in at number one. But there were some horses that worked hard to get up into the list, stay on the list. Those are the horses that belong in the number one, two spot. Oso Pine came out of nowhere, so to speak. He's been lurking on the top 10 list all year. Fell off it a little bit. He's back with a bang yesterday. Oh, so pine, huge mile yesterday. This is a serious colt. Uh, so he's number one on my horses to watch list. Number one overall yesterday. But um, I think it was only fair to keep him off the top 10. When you get a horse like Arvika, make a little break and drop off the top 10 list. It shows you how tough the top 10 list is this week. Oh, so pine, number one. Number one easily in the, uh, in the horses to watch list. Ten less here uh, for the stable.ca. So this was tough. I'm going to talk about some horses that didn't make the top ten, specifically seven of them. And all seven of them have been on the top ten list before. All seven of them looked great yesterday. A couple of them made a little breaks. A couple of them were okay. Just it was really tough to get them on this top ten. There's some scratching and moving going on here. But I'm going to give you the horses that didn't. Springbridge Proud. Trained awesome. One a mile and two, four, and four. Come a half and 59 and two. Quarter and 29 in a piece. Looked great doing it. Uh, just didn't make the top 10 list last week with his impressive mile. But uh, when you see who we have on this list, you'll understand why. But Springbridge Proud, no slouch. Sylvain Fillion was super impressed with this colt. And how couldn't you be? How couldn't you be impressed with Springbridge Proud the way he looked today? Man, or yesterday. Man, oh man. This is one nice colt. Uh, Buckingham. Finished fifth in the set, fourth or fifth in the set. Saftik said she had lots of pace on the end of it, but he obviously knew how much they were going. Wasn't going to chase her, and that's important. That's why we had these guys out here yesterday. Um, they might have been a little, they might have went a little faster than I thought they'd do, uh, than I thought they would, but the way they did it was, was professional. And nobody was chasing the horses too much. They were all well within themselves and well in hand. Buckingham, Saftik said, I just let her pace under the, under the finish line, so to speak, the wire, so to speak and uh, let her finish up after that. She was awesome. So Buckingham, uh, also just below the top 10 list. King of the ball. I don't know what went on with King of the ball yesterday. He was putrid and never has been. Made breaks, has always made speed breaks. This wasn't a speed breaks yesterday. James said he just was flat. It was terrible. I think this Colt maybe tied up yesterday or tied up the day before. We had some really, really weird weather blow through here. Um, Saturday night, it was plus four in the middle of the night. The night before, it was right around freezing. So um, these horses are out there working, getting polished up for the open house. And I saw this horse go out the door uh, for the trip with James, and he was really erratic. And it leaped once going out the door. Was not happy yesterday. Um, we I meant to draw his blood today, but we didn't. We'll draw it tomorrow, which is fine. I would be shocked if we don't see an AST, uh, a muscle count level, come back a little high on him. Not bad, though. Uh, this is all learning learning curve for him, too. He's got a... Uh, He's got to go through the good and the bad, and he'll bounce back, and he'll be fine this week. I'm sure I'll have him over at Mohawk on Saturday, and uh, the old king of the ball will be back. It's not like this horse has continued to have problems. He's been good. The break with Ricky last week was an equipment issue. It wasn't a him issue, and he was awesome leading up to that week. So we'll throw that one out, but unfortunately he's going to slide off the top 10 looking at the 10 that are in front of him. 
that's only fair as I said war we ultra another Philly Looked great yesterday I think if Dougie had just cut her loose getting down the back stretch she wins the set easily but she made a break going into the first turn so very smart of Doug McNair not to do that I appreciate that it's hard for these guys to come over sometimes and drive the horses like they're theirs when they're not but I appreciate him wrapping her up and taking care of her the rest of the mile lots of trot on the end of it you watch her finish up from the far outside she is flying down the lane looked great and uh, very happy with her but again made a little break gonna keep her off the keep her off the top 10 list be my delight no real reason for this filly not to be on the top 10 list other than I just couldn't put her on it she looked uh, the sun's out now she looked um, she looked great yesterday good mile just a tough gritty little filly what I love about her I went in today all her breakfast is gone she got her head over the gate neck her in and play and I love that and then the and then Arvika, obviously Arvika made a little break, ripped a shoe off. Mario loves this filly though. He said you can tell the one word he used to describe her, and and it was it was it was good because it, it was the perfect word for her was classy, and you can tell all the good horses you've ever seen for the most part, they just got a way about them. You know they're just as he said classy, and that's the one word he used to explain uh, her. And I didn't need to ask him any more about her. He said you know what she is. She's just a classy filly, and uh, that meant a lot. You know, coming for a guy who's driven so many good horses as Mario, he really liked her, and he asked to go with her next time. So uh, Mario's going to be over there going with some horses. You know, obviously, I'm going to be on the road a lot this year, and until we see how the schedules, we have the schedules, but until we see how the horses qualify, it's very difficult for me to slot in where I want to be. Um, you know, these guys that come out today, obviously, I'm going to ask my brother James, you know, uh, my brother James is is uh, uh, a great driver. He's going to get a chance. I think Mike Saftik, Mario Bergeron, Sylvain Filion, who's been for, been here for me from the start. You know, I was just embarrassed of anything to ask him this year because we really didn't get him any drives. The first year we had the stable, the first year we had the stable, Sylvain Filion was there every Saturday almost. Be you know, he had horses with Stefan LaRock, who was stable beside us. It's Sylvain Filion. He was winning the O'Brien Award, winning horses, winning races every night at Mohawk and Woodbine. He certainly didn't have to stay there and go with our horses. And I won't. I didn't forget that, and I won't forget that. And uh, I really appreciate all the help that not just all the drivers, but especially Sylvain gives us. And Jody couldn't make it, but he's usually there for us too. Um, you know, these are all great guys. And, um, you know, it's funny. You don't realize that this is a young man's game until you're not a young man anymore. And it's not like I'm a fossil or anything, but uh, a guy like Mario Bergeron, you know, with the incredible talent he is, and he, you know, for me, he just doesn't get the drives he should. He's got he's a wealth, a, a fountain of knowledge. You know, him and his brother uh, Ben uh, have been one of the the toughest tag teams, if you will, in Canadian, if not North American racing, for a long time. Uh, great, great, great horseman, and to have him sit behind your horses and give you uh, tips and advice. Really, really lucky to have that. So. Um, we're going to start bringing these horses over, maybe training and schooling over the next three weeks and getting them polished up and ready for the qualifiers. And we are going to be using the same guys that we used yesterday and some of the guys that couldn't be there also. But um, it's a feather in our cap to, uh, to have guys that are available and, and eager to help out. So that's the horses that didn't make the top 10. I mean, just imagine what the top 10 looks like if those ones didn't make the top 10. Number 10. Number 10... Uh, Time All Too Low. Time All Too Low. I trained in 211 at Mohawk. I thought he looked good. Sylvain was really protective of him only because I told him you got to watch him in that last turn at Tomiko Training Center. He, sometimes you can lose him. He didn't take him. He didn't move him over. He just let him sprint hard down the lane. I guess he's almost was in a dead heat with Be My Delight. Um, Be My Delight in Buckingham and Springbridge Proud. But Sylvain was really, really high on this colt when he pulled up. He asked about him a few times. Um, very interested in him so for me I think that was the reason that it put me over he also went with Springbridge Proud he liked him a lot uh, I got the feeling he was really impressed with Time Tulo. although as a driver I mean I think a lot of the drivers are the same driving a really nice trotter it's a great feeling so uh, Time Tulo impressive yesterday not shocking to me shouldn't be shocking to you that he made the top 10 certainly worthy of being on the top 10 and looked great yesterday finished up 29 at a piece on a half mile track Good job for Sylvain. Good job to Sylvain and, uh, and the horse. Number nine, Autumn Wings. Didn't quite make a break, but was a little uncomfortable. Not that surprising. That set come a half in 58 and 4. 58 and 3, something like that. 
this filly was ready to go, but not ready to go there. And the good thing is, she, again, sharp, eating her supper, eating her breakfast, had her head over the gate, very playful. These are things that are very, very important as a trainer. I walked up, I come back from Flamborough last night, stopped on my way back home, stopped at the farm to walk up and down the shed rows and take a look at the horse, see if they're eating, see if they got their head out. This is what's important to me, what takes place after the training miles is, is for me, every bit as important as what takes place in the training miles. And Autumn Wings was sharp as a tack. So she'll come. Still lots of work to do for her. Good news is we've still got lots of time. So Autumn Wings comes in at number nine. Slipped down a little bit. Finished third or fourth in her set. A little uncomfortable in the turns, but still come half in like 59 seconds or 59 and one. She looked great. Uh, number eight, White Tiger. Um, I can't say I was really thrilled with what I saw with White Tiger. His toes are a little bit long up front, and Amy had said... Maybe we should chop the toes off, and then I didn't want to before the open house. And I don't think I'd ever not. I don't think I'd ever uh, choose taking the toes off a horse before, especially a trotter, before they go and train. So for me, uh, I'm not going to second guess myself on that. But uh, hindsight is 2020, and I wish now I had of. If you watch the video, James said he was a little warm, and I know why. Uh, White Tiger gets up and touches his elbows. We talked about this before. I trained him hard in the hobbles the other day. We had them off him. But he's just, you know, I, I hope I hope that White Tiger turns out to be one of the nicest horses we ever had. And I'm never going to regret gelding this horse because he does not pay attention sometimes out in the track. He's looking at the birds. He's looking at the gate. He's looking at the other horses. He's looking at everything. He's not paying attention. He's that talented, and he still doesn't pay attention. So uh, it's just going to take repetition and work um, to get this guy motivated. The biggest problem is... When you do work him, I think with a little bit longer toe, he get up into that elbow. And the reason I say this, James and I talked about this at length last night at the racetrack. If you watch the video, and I watched him specifically multiple times, after the mile, through the turn, you can watch him three or four times. He made a little break, finishing up way after the mile. But if you watch three or four turn times in that turn, you can see him get out of gear. Just put a little step in, a little step in, a little step in, a little step in. And then when they come out of the turn, he went to power away and he made a break. And I'm pretty sure he was hitting his elbow. Amy said he did mark up, mark up that right elbow. I'm pretty sure I know what it was. So we have a set of uh, a light shoes on him right now. We're going to lighten him right up with a set of aluminums, which is very rare to see a two-year-old trotting colt, I think, with a set of aluminums on. But you're going to see one next week. We're going to put a set of aluminums on him, drop him down. I think by the looks, just by the naked eye, I would say he's 51, maybe 52 degrees up front, which is a little high. We're gonna we're gonna take the, a little more heel off him because we have to take some toe off him. I'd like to see him down around 50 degrees, even 49. So for me, um, I was extremely happy. Uh, I wasn't extremely happy with White Tiger. I was happy that he did his work. Happy with the mile he did, but uh, a little concerned with what I saw afterwards. It's not lameness or anything. I know exactly what he was doing. Simply just hitting his elbow. So we can get through that no problem. We're gonna make a few little changes. Take him over to Mohawk this week and see how he makes it. Uh, Bay Jewel, finally, she finds herself in this list. She's going to find herself climbing the list if we have many more of them. Bay Jewel was awesome. I said to Phil yesterday, I said, I'm not going to tell you anything about this filly. I'm going to tell you one thing for sure. You're going to love her. I said, this is a little race car, and she loves to work. He said, you know, I was just shutting her down, and, and a horse come to me hard down the lane. I just tapped her on the tail and kind of shook the lines at her. She was gone. This filly loves to work. She is the epitome of a, of a, of a racehorse. Just a beautiful little filly. Loves to, she's not little. I'd say she's medium size. She's not big, but she's not little. Um, I would say she's a, a, a decent sized filly with a big engine. Smart, got a good heart on her. She's good. I like this filly a lot, and Phil loved her. Number seven, just because. She's going to find her way f up the list further on. Um, Stonebridge Simba. Stonebridge Simba looked awesome. First over through the last turn. Finished up right beside me with Oso Pine. I just got done telling you all about Oso Pine. Never told you about Simba, Stonebridge Simba. Mm, mile and two, four and three. He had to come a half in 59. Had to come 29 seconds. He was well behind me when I started him up. Um, when, when I started him up down the back stretch and then shut him down in the last turn. Oso Pine, I was on. And Sylvain was coming with this little horse. He never stopped. He said, this is the surest footed little bugger. He said, wow, this is a nice little trotter. And he didn't know. I said, he's a full brother to Man of Many Missions. He said, the stud, man of many missions. I said, yeah, he's a Yankee glad, a full brother. He said, wow. He said, geez, he's a really, really nice horse. And uh, he really liked them. And 
really happy with what I've seen from Stonebird Simba. I was talking to Andrew Harris actually owns a small piece of this horse and I was talking to him after about him and he was really ecstatic about how he looked and and uh, what Sylvain had to say about him. So uh, you'll also see some driver videos. I shot one of them and he's talking about Stonebird Simba in one of these videos and really really happy about him. So that's the top six. Number five. Number five. Number five. Time Al Houdini. Uh, Ed and Cheryl Safey were there yesterday. Got to see this horse live. He's like a big gentle giant. He's still a stud. Never squeals or roars or goes on. Rest his head right in your shoulder. Got a big, beautiful head on him. Just a just a picture of a, a gorgeous animal. And he looked great yesterday. I said to Safety, you're gonna like this fella. So just keep him on his toes and keep him moving forward. He moved him like three times in the mile. I don't know if he won or not. I think he was in with I think it's the program right here. He was in with uh I knew it. He was in with Swandre the Giant. I can't remember if Swandre the Giant could buy him or not, but um, uh, Taimo Houdini looked fantastic. Uh, easily number five. Easily number five. Number four, Swandre the Giant. Um, you'll know why he's not number one here in a minute. But Swandre the Giant, Mario Bergeron asked me about five times about him afterwards. Was there shares left? How nice a horse he is. Beautiful gait he is. How smart he is how experienced he feels for a young horse. Just, he couldn't say enough nice things about Swandre the Giant. This is a good horse. This is a good colt. And he's fast. And he's strong. And for me, couldn't ask any more from Swandre the Giant. These horses were flying on the end of it. And uh, Mario loved this colt. So we've talked about it before. A couple of weeks ago, he was number one. And he didn't really slide out. Only a couple of horses. The horse in third and him are kind of tied. I was going to switch them, actually, but... That's not really fair. So I'm going to make them, you know, they can be tied if they want. Third and fourth. Uh, because Swander the Giant was fantastic yesterday. Maintenance man. Maintenance man uh, r remains amongst the top of the horses. Um, now I'm going to give you a little tip. Or a little little story. All these horses have been quarters in 30 seconds. But I, I tighten them all up, a lot of them, on Wednesdays. You know, these horses that are all in the top 10 look so flashy. I cut them loose about four days before, so they were all good and tight and looked really good. I haven't sat behind Maintenance Man since January, and we think so highly of this colt. There was just really no reason to go a big mile with him in the middle of the week. Maintenance Man's never been a mile in 2.4, 2.5. He's never been a half in 58. He's never been a quarter in 29 in a piece. He's never been a quarter better in 31 seconds, maybe 32, but he will easily. The problem is, is that... Um, he just hadn't been before yesterday. Now, we'll talk about Linnea. I'll give you a little spoiler alert. Talk about a Linnea in a, in a couple of seconds. But Linnea has been big quarters and big halves. And maintenance man just wasn't ready for it. You know, he went through the motions and he did his work as well as he could. But he needed to go above and beyond. And he physically just wasn't in the position to do that. Dougie moved him to the front. And uh, when he called on him, the other filly just hit. She was just that much tighter, you know, and she put it on him. Put it on him fair and square, but make no mistake, this is a big, strong, powerful colt. And when we put some tight miles into him, look out. I'm not worried about anybody going by him at that point. Uh, but they did go by him yesterday. One went by him. He fought back on as best he could, but she was just too sharp, too strong, and had all the momentum. So maintenance man's going to sit th squarely in third. Now, I told you uh, I don't like taking horses that haven't been on the list for a while or have never been on the list and jumping them up the list. It's not fair to the horses that are good week in and week out. Now, I was a little torn when I did with this next filly um, because she hadn't been on the top 10 for a while, but she's always been good. She was on the top 10 for quite a while and then just kind of dropped back. She had a quarter crack. Her leg blew up. She was sick. She lost some weight. Um, Mario went out the door with this filly yesterday, Mario Bergeron. And I said, you know, she's sound now. She trained good on Wednesday. I trained her in 14. She was good, strong. I said, just drive her accordingly. She feels good, you know, cut her loose a little bit, but keep a close eye on her. He said, okay, no problem. I think you know who I'm talking about if you watched the, if you watched the videos yesterday. Sunshine Inn. Sunshine Inn did something remarkable yesterday. If you watch the mile. Mario starts her up, taps her on the tail from six, starting into the back stretch. As soon as he starts her up and moves, she wants to attack. 
She's a, she's a fighter. She's competitive. As soon as you tapped her on the tail, she's in gear right away. Now she's starting to come 100. James kind of floats out of the hole like he was racing at Mo Mohawk. <laughs> James kind of starts out of the hole. Mario doesn't even bat an eye. He just folds her up three deep, just stacks her three high, and she is gone. All right, now, for those of you who remember also, Sunshine Inn would get in a little bit, make the odd break in the turns, get out of gear in the turns. So I'm watching this, and I'm like, oh, my God, there's going to be an accident. I said, because I know how fast Mario's going. You can tell watching the video. This filly is going race speed right now. He is coming 100 into the turn. She didn't put one step in. They came out of the turn. He tapped her on the tail again. She drove away. I don't think, like I mentioned Oso Pine, how impressive he was just because he looked fantastic. But Sunshine Inn, I'm not even going to tell you how fast he came his last half because uh, he came up to me and he, he told me how fast he goes. I'm telling you, I didn't really even speak to her. And the next thing he said, can I school her? Because <laughs> he really, really likes this filly. So, um, he went by Sunshine's Finest. How did Sunshine's Finest not get listed? Wow. Sunshine's Finest was fantastic yesterday also. I apologize for the people that own Sunshine's Finest. You're listening to this. I know I'm kind of encroaching on, on, on number two, but Sunshine's Finest was tremendous yesterday. This colt showed me a lot. I sat behind him on Wednesday. Look out. This is a nice colt. And Danny went with him yesterday. Danny O'Brien ended up finishing second to Sunshine Inn. Um, Sunshine Inn was unbelievably good. Uh, unbelievably good yesterday. Eye-catching mile. I've had four or five people email me and text me about who's the Sunshine Beach filly in the eighth set. Was that the inn or the finest? Both of them finished up 1-2, but it was Sunshine Inn with a big, gigantic, explosive move down the backstretch and drove away to win it. Sunshine's Finest was second. My apologies, Sunshine's Finest should absolutely, if nothing else, how the hell do I know that? Oh, I missed him, he's right here. That's my fault. We'll put him just under the top 10, but I'll talk about him because he's a nice horse. Sunshine's Finest, keep your eye on this colt. This thing looks good. This is the guy that popped two curbs. We had them crowd, went easy with him for three weeks. This was his first big mile, and he did it good. So, Sunshine Ian drives into the top, top 10 at number two. Sunshine's Finest kind of snuck in with her. But Sunshine Inn deserves to be number two. Why she didn't get to number one? Well, I'll tell you why she didn't get to number one. Because there was another filly in there that Bob Burgess bred. Another filly by Sports Writer. Little tiny filly by Sports Writer. And her name was Linnea. And for those of you, we've talked about Linnea on and off and on and off. Linnea this, Linnea that. But she always looked pretty impressive. Was she ever the number one horse in a week? No. Looked good lots. Never the number one horse. I'll just tell you what. When you come first over and against the horses she was in against, maintenance man and those horses, come the last half and 58 and 3 in the bike, first over and drive away, drive away to win easy, you end up in number one. So Linnea, number one this week um, in the top ten list. You look at how good the horse were the yesterday. The standouts we talked about. We talked about, where's the list? I don't know where it is. Oh, I know who they are. See you in Tuscany. Christine K. Oso Pine. Linnea. Sunshine's Finest. Sunshine Inn. I mean, the list goes on and on and on of horses that look tremendous. Sunshine Inn was shockingly good. Linnea was extremely good. Linnea come first over and dealt with the best we have to offer in a very easy way. And uh, Mario couldn't believe how good she was after the first set. She's just a tiny little thing. And the groom said, going out, he said, when you move this filly, she's got a big kick. And I think Mario said, yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? He comes first door, his mouth shut. He says, oh my God. Not only she's got a big kick, she's tough. We always knew she was tough. You know, come first over, grind them up, grind them into dirt and drive away from them. What's better than that? Just a beautiful filly, very bright future. Linnea, number one in the top 10 list this week. So that's it for the movers. We get a whole bunch of them this today. Movers, uh, top five movers, uh, horses to watch. Number one horse, uh, I guess, of the week. Number one horse to watch of the week is Oso Pine. Could have easily been the number one horse overall. Him and Linnea are head and head for that. And Sunshine Inn, I mean, three of the most impressive miles I've seen a two-year-old ever go at Tomiko Training Center. So, um, 
We talked with Oso Pine. And then we talked with the top 10 list. We're going to be back in a minute. I'm going to tell you all about everybody. <laughs> 